Greetings, and welcome to Flanagan's Ecologic. I am your host, Ted Flanagan, and this episode of Ecologic covers Econet News, Volume 26, Issue Number 3, March 2024. Quote of the Month It's fascinating that something as simple as dancing can hold such power over our mental health. Makes you wonder how many other traditional forms of healing we overlook in modern medicine. An anonymous comment in the February 22nd AOL Independent article. Flanagan's net positive 1.5 billion vegetarians. Some time ago in 2012, to be a bit more precise, Econet reported that there were 7.3 million vegetarians in the United States. We've now been updated by our colleague Kane Rosario at the World Animal Foundation. Data from 2023 shows that there are 9.7 million U.S. vegetarians, about 3% of the population. Worldwide, 22% of the Earth's population, or 1.5 billion people, are vegetarian. So what is a vegetarian? First and foremost, they eat plant-based diets. Michael Pollan's seven-word diet. Eat food, not too much, mostly vegetables. Good advice. There are a wide variety of plant-based or vegetarian diets. Meat is always excluded. Consider the variety of types. Vegans eat no animal products such as meat, milk, poultry, cheese, eggs, fish, or honey. Lacto-vegetarians don't eat meat, poultry, fish, or eggs but will still use dairy products. Lacto-ovo vegetarians don't eat meat, fish, poultry, or honey, but will consume eggs and dairy products. Ovo vegetarians eat eggs, but refrain from all other animal products such as meat, milk, fish, poultry, or honey. Pesco vegetarians will eat fish, but no other sources of meat or dairy. Polo vegetarians consume poultry, but refuse red meat consumption. The World Animal Foundation is a digital platform advocating animal rights, responsible pet ownership, and compassionate awareness. It claims that shifting to a vegetarian diet can reduce the amount of land needed for agriculture by 75%. According to the World Cancer Research Fund, vegetarians have 14% less risk of cancer. Vegetarianism is far from a new thing. Monks and other spiritual leaders have often lived without eating meat or partaking in animal slaughter. Worldwide, many simply cannot afford meat. It's too expensive or just not available. Due to Tamil and Hindu religious convictions, India has a high share of vegetarians. In addition, its impoverished population can't afford meat and thus rely on plant-based foods. In India, 35% of the population is vegetarian. India has a 13% vegan share. China next with 6% vegan share and similar socioeconomic conditions. In America, vegans are a fraction of the U.S. vegetarians, likely less than 1%. That said, there is an explosion of interest in healthy plant-based foods in America today. The health benefits are speaking to us. The Vegetarian Resource Group, based in Baltimore, Maryland, reflects on consumer demand and that Target is selling almond and soy milk. Chipotle has a vegan bowl and Carl's Jr. is offering Beyond Burgers, all meat-free. While those that consider themselves to be vegetarians is a limited number, many of us have shifted to consuming more and healthier plant-based foods. Turns out that 46% of Americans always or sometimes eat vegetarian meals when eating out. The power of the increment, this has great value for our bodies and for our society. Ohio's Solar Milestone Ohio is making solar history. The planned and recently approved Oak Run Solar Farm, developed by Kansas City-based Savian Energy, a Shell Group subsidiary, will be located on 6,000 acres west of Columbus in Madison County, Ohio. It will be made up of 800 megawatts of solar, 
300 megawatts of battery storage capacity serviced by two 3.5-mile transmission lines. Oak Run will be the state's largest solar project and the largest agrivoltaics project in the country. It was approved by the Ohio Power Siting Board last week. Fully 90% of Madison County is designated as farmland. Thus, the Oak Run project faced considerable local opposition. Over 1,000 public comments regarding the project. The project was approved with nearly 50 conditions. For instance, Oak Run must graze at least 1,000 sheep and grow crops on 2,000 acres after the first year of operation. Within eight years of operation, at least 4,000 acres will be used for agrivoltaics, a blend of solar production and agriculture. That will make it the largest agrivoltaics project in the United States. Oak Run is the first of its kind, a utility-scaled solar farm for solar, livestock, and row crops. Oak Run will create 1,200 construction jobs and will generate $8.2 million in annual revenues for the county, local governments, and schools. The 2024 World Happiness Report. It's in the 2024 edition of the World Happiness Report. It ranks the happiest countries in the world. Some big news. Since the report was first released 12 years ago, this is the first time that the United States is not in the top 20. We are now 23, just behind the United Arab Emirates and Slovenia. Here's the list. Finland, Denmark, Iceland, Sweden, Israel, the Netherlands, Norway, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Australia, New Zealand, Costa Rica, Kuwait, Austria, Canada, Belgium, Ireland, Czechia, Lithuania, and the United Kingdom, number 20. Observations. First, Nordic countries top the list. Second, there are no countries which have large populations. In the top 10, only Australia and the Netherlands top 15 million people. In the top 20, only Canada and the United Kingdom exceed 30 million people. By age, the United States is ranked in the top 10 by old people, those over 60. But for those less than 30 years old, the U.S. scored only 63rd. Data was drawn from the World Gallup poll, based on responses from over 100,000 people all over the world. The study is rooted in a fundamental question. Participants are asked what step of a 10-step ladder they feel they are on, the highest step representing the person's best life. The editors have identified six factors at the root of happiness. Social support is considered to be the best predictor of happiness. If people feel that they have at least one friend to reach out to in need, they are more likely to feel secure. Gross domestic product per capita is a key economic metric of national well-being. Number three, an expectation of a healthy life based on the physical and mental health of the population is a factor. The freedom to make life choices also is an underpinning to happiness. The degree to which a country and its people are generous, how charitable a country's people are, is a factor. Inversely, the perception of government and corruption is a downer. The report is a collaborative effort between Gallup, the Oxford Wellbeing Research Center, the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Networks, and the World Happiness Report Editorial Board. They report growing worldwide demand for happiness and well-being, and recognition of the science of happiness. Dancing Away Depression A new study conducted by Australian researchers finds that dancing is the best form of exercise to combat depression, beating out walking, jogging, yoga, tai chi, strength training, and others. The purpose of the study was to identify the best means of combating major depressive disorder, either in tandem or compared to prescription of psychotherapy and antidepressants. The study was conducted by researchers from the University of Sydney, the University of New South Wales, Marquerie University, and Queensland University of Technology. Published in Sports Medicine, the study is a large systematic review with meta-analyses investigating the effect of dance on psychological and cognitive health. The researchers used a variety of dance interventions. 
from a broad range, range of genres of music and dance, theatrical dance, aerobic dance, traditional dance forms, and social dance. And they found that dance is better than other physical activities for a wide variety of age groups and with and without clinical conditions. Through 218 different studies with 14,170 participants, researchers found that moderate reductions were made across the board with exercise. But within that window, dancing was at the top of the charts in terms of the largest reductions in depression symptoms. Women seemed to fare well with strength training, men more affected by yoga and tai chi. Just as there are many dancing styles from ballet to salsa and ballroom, there are many benefits of, of the rhythmic movement of dancing. Moderate intensity dancing, dancing improves cardiovascular health, especially hip hop. Dancing increases muscle strength, especially calf's muscle, calf muscles in ballet. A study links square dancing with bone density and lower body strength. For some, depression symptoms are tied to reduced neurotransmitter activity in the brain. Research has extensively tested the body and brain's response to movement and shown that it can greatly impact one's overall well-being. Experts note that dancing, like other forms of exercises, releases endorphins that can create a mood boost during and after. I learned about DMT, or dance movement therapy. Dancing also builds strong bones and enhances balance, flexibility, and coordination. It boosts brain power, drawing on cognitive skills for set routines. It's good at stemming off the effects of Alzheimer's and lowers rates of dementia. Overall, dancing is known to lower stress, lift spirits, and keep you socially connected. It's physical and mental, a social heart-pumping activity. Shell closing 1,000 gas stations. The oil giant Shell is shifting its focus. Its Energy Transition Strategy 2024 report announced that it is planning to close 1,000 gas stations in the next two years. While that's only 4% of its global network of gas stations, the move signifies a big shift. Shell is shifting its focus to EVs, primarily in Asia and Europe. Shell reports that today there are 40 million BEVs and PHEVs on the road, with 275 million expected by 2030. The availability of charging points will be critical for the growth in electric vehicles. As such, Shell's EV charging division, Shell Recharge, is now ramping up fast. Its charging station in Shenzhen, China, has 258 chargers. It opened in September near the airport in partnership with Chinese EV maker BYD. At the end of 2023, Shell Recharge was operating 54,000 public charge points worldwide, up from 27,000 in 2022. Shell considers itself to have a competitive advantage in charging, citing its vast global network of service stations with convenience stores to offer customers coffee, food, and other items when they charge their cars. Shell plans to have installed 70,000 EV charge points by 2025 and 200,000 charge points by 2030. In the United States, Shell completed its purchase of Volta, an EV charging company with a unique media display and thus source of revenues, with 3,000 charge points across 31 states and many more in development. Big Q4 battery ramp up. The final quarter of 2023 was remarkable for, for batteries, a 101% increase from the last quarter, and a whopping 358% increase compared to the third quarter of 2022. In the final quarter of 2023, there was 4,235 megawatts, 12,351 megawatt hours of battery storage installed in the United States. The fourth quarter result was made possible by easing supply chains and system price declines. According to Wood McKenzie and the American Clean Power Association report, this was the first time that more than 3 gigawatts of storage capacity was installed in a three-month period. In fact, the number topped 4 gigawatts. California leads the nation with storage, followed by Arizona and Texas. Of the total battery capacity, the vast majority installed was grid scale. The amount of behind-the-meter battery energy storage was 
218.5 megawatts, about 5% of the total installed. Strongest ever auto pollution standards. On March 20th, 2024, the US EPA issued its final rule, multi-pollutant emission standards for model years 2027 and later, light duty and medium duty vehicles. It sets more new and more protective standards to further reduce harmful air pollutants. It builds on the standards set for 2023 through 2026 and leverages advances in clean air technologies to reduce smog, soot, and climate pollution, while saving drivers money through reduced fuel and maintenance costs. The rule will reduce greenhouse gases, nitrous oxide, and particulate matter. From 2027 through 2035, the rule will mitigate 7.2 billion metric tons of CO2, while providing 100 billion in net benefits to consumers and society in health benefits and reduced costs. For light-duty vehicles, the standard is projected to result in an industry-wide average target for the light-duty fleet of 85 grams of CO2 per mile in 2032. This represents a nearly 50% reduction in the projected fleet average emissions target from the 2026 standards. Cars will drop from 139 grams of CO2 per mile in 2027 to 73 grams per mile in 2032. Light-duty trucks will drop from 184 to 90 grams in the same five-year period. Law 360 reports that more than 1 million new electric vehicles were sold in the United States in 2023. EVs now account for about 10% of the overall American light-duty car sales, according to the Alliance for Automotive Information. And despite some reports of lower consumer demand for EVs, there are now 111 models of electric vehicles available for sale in the United States. Some barriers retard even faster EV adoption. EVs are still more expensive, according to Kelly Blue Book. EVs sold for an average price of $52,314 in February, 19% higher than the median price of a mainstream non-luxury vehicle. A big factor is perceived an actual lack of charging. Range is still certainly of concern. In 2021, President Biden set a goal for 50% of all new cars and trucks sold in the United States to be electric or hybrids by 2030. That same year, and to support that goal, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, provided billions for EV charging and battery manufacturing. Enhanced tax incentives for EVs were provided in the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. Then in March, the EPA issued its strictest ever tailpipe emissions regulations, deliberately aiming to re-energize the auto industry towards electrification. Electrifying heavy-duty trucks. Heavy-duty trucks are only 5% of all vehicles on the road, but represent 25% of vehicular emissions. Thus, their electrification has tremendous greenhouse gas implications, matched with a fundamental challenge. While diesel trucks can go around 900 miles on a full tank, an electric semi has a range of only two to 300 miles. Therefore, today they are not well suited for transcontinental jaunts. To enable electric trucks to run on our nation's highways, there would need to be chargers avail- available at least every 100 miles, a system of high-power charging hubs. The federal government recently released the National Zero Emission Freight Corridor Strategy, a 15-year roadmap for developing charging stations and hydrogen fueling stations across the country. The intent is to provide the sufficient charging for the more than 20 million cargo vans, box trucks, and short-haul and long-haul semis. The strategy begins with chargers for 30 freight hubs near ports, train depots, and other concentrations of freight traffic. The next phase involves developing corridors with adequate charging. Third, connect the corridors. EPA's proposed rule for trucks was released in April of 2023, officially known as the GHG Emissions Standards for Heavy-Duty Vehicles Phase 3. It aims to reduce emissions from these trucks by 29% below 2020 levels by 2032. 
it will apply to new trucks beginning in 2027. Since the EPA rule, there have been industry concerns about inadequate electric charging to make the transition feasible. Groups have pushed for an off-ramp, a weakening of these standards, if the infrastructure development targets aren't met. In related news, a new report by Energy Innovation finds that electric trucks are closer to being commercially viable than previously thought. Key to the development of heavy-duty vehicle, HDV, electric trucks is the cost of their battery packs. A Volvo FH electric prime mover has a 540 kilowatt hour battery pack in a range of about 300 kilometers. A Bloomberg New Energy Finance Outlook reports on a pivotal shift. Battery electric heavy-duty vehicles are expected to reach price parity with their diesel counterparts sooner than previously anticipated. In a forecast a year ago, Energy Innovation predicted battery costs would be $123 per kilowatt hour by 2030. Now that same firm predicts $85 per kilowatt hour by 2030, a 31% reduction, making electric heavy-duty trucks that much closer to a cost-effective reality. Environmental Social Governance, ESG. ESG is a management and analysis framework used to understand and measure how sustainably an organization is operating. ESG takes a holistic view that sustainability extends beyond just environmental issues. It also focuses on social and governance factors. The ESG lens helps assess how an organization manages the risks and opportunities created by changing conditions, such as shifts in environmental, economic, and social systems. It has changed the way some capital decisions are made by many of the largest financial services and asset management firms in the world. There are ESG rating agencies that assign ESG scores that range from 0 to 100. Generally, poor performance is reflected in a score of less than 50. Excellent performance would result in a score of more than 70. Environmental factors considered include direct and indirect greenhouse gas emissions, stewardship of natural resources, and overall resilience against climate calamities such as flooding and fires. Social factors focus on human capital management and metrics such as fair wages and impacts on communities in which the organization operates. Social factors also extend up the supply chain, particularly in developing economies where environmental and labor standards may be less robust. Governance focuses on on how an organization is led and managed if its leadership incentives are aligned with shareholder rights, whether it has internal controls to promote transparency and accountability. ESG has evolved from movements that have focused on health and safety issues, pollution reduction, and corporate philanthropy. In the 1980s, it was EHS, Environmental Health and Safety, then Corporate Sustainability in the 1990s, followed by CSR, or Corporate Social Responsibility, in the early 2000s. ESG was first mentioned in a 2004 United Nations report. In the 2010 to 2020 timeframe, ESG emerged as a strong force. It went mainstream when the framework and its scores became an integral part of many institutional investors' playbooks. Flanagan's Ecologic Podcast Updates, Big News, Feedstock has listed Flanagan's Ecologic as one of the top 15 sustainability podcasts in California. Feedstock is a platform that lets users access their their favorite blogs, podcasts, news websites, YouTube channels, and RSS feeds in one place. Ecomotion has now produced over 150 podcasts that tell powerful stories in crafting sustainability. First and foremost, I thank our guests, I also thank our esteemed podcast coach, Reese Waters, and Elise Siddiqui and Sierra Flanagan, without whom there would be no podcast. That's it. Thanks for listening to Flanagan's Ecologic. We'll see you next time.